Hey guys, so I figured what better way to kick off my channel than to start by showing you all of the planners and journals that I will be using for 2020. Um, and actually have been using for 2020. After all, it is already the end of January. Like I can't believe that this month has flown by so quickly. But I figured, hey, better now than never. Um, and more importantly, what's wrong with one more planner or journal lineup video to watch, especially if you binge watch them like I do. Um, so I do have a lot of planners and journals that I'm going to share with you, but don't panic. I will not be using all of these all of the time. Like I don't even know how I would do that. Um, but some of them are actually experiments. Some of them are replacements for what I was using for last year. So we'll see how the year shapes up and hopefully you guys will come along on this journey with me. So I'm going to start off by talking about my collection of Hobonichis. I love these, have been addicted to them for quite some time, and then I'll journey into some of the others that I will be using. So let me start by um, showing you guys the main planner um, or journal that I will be using. Um, this is the Hobonichi Cousin. It is an A5 size planner. Um, I have it in a cover that I purchased from the Hobonichi website. It is called Night Safari. It's this really pretty navy blue um, with kind of this camel rust color um, on the inside. And I absolutely love the color scheme. I thought it was gorgeous, so I had to have it. And I did put it in a clear cover on cover that I also got from the Hobonichi website to protect it since it's kind of a fabric-like material. Um, but this particular Hobonichi is the Hobonichi Day Free version. Um, so if you don't know about the Hobonichi Day Free version, it is basically the Hobonichi Cousin, um, but they have taken out all of the weekly layout sections and the daily pages. So now all that you are left with are monthly pages and a bunch of blank pages. They even put this cute little like flip guy down at the bottom like I don't know if you remember those from when you were a kid like those little flip books but if you flip like this guy kind of eats or something which I thought was really adorable but this planner will actually be my bullet journal um, I have been bullet journaling for quite some time um, it started with you know just a video that I ran across and then I eventually um, went to Ryder Carroll's website who is the creator of the bullet journal method read the book and decided to um, try it in the way that he originally envisioned it um, and so this gives me the flexibility to do that without feeling like I'm you know forced into some type of planner structure so I've got my monthly pages um, I've already captured, of course, my goals for 2020. I've got a spread that I created for my finances um, and a couple of other spreads, which are just like books to read, a brain dump. And then I kind of go into my daily, you know, bullet journaling. So this is going to be the one that I use for my bullet journal. Now, let me show you guys this adorable thing. It is the Hobonichi Weeks. Um, it has become popular um that i've um, at least that, that i've noticed um in the past like year or so or maybe even longer um this is probably the third or fourth one of these that i actually purchased um but i found that as my everyday planner it was difficult for me to use it just because of how narrow the pages are so i am actually going to be using this one in 2020 for a self-care journal um so on the monthly pages i'll just be writing just like a little um, blurb about, you know, what my mood is, or I'm planning on making some mood stickers that I'm going to use in this at some point in time. But every single day after I meditate, then I just come in and put in the the topic that was discussed during the meditation, because um, I do use a guided meditation using the Calm app. And then I put in some of my stats. And then in the back is where I go in and expand on um, how I felt about that particular day or how I felt about that particular message um, or what my goal is for the day in terms of my wellness and self-care. Um, I also capture stats like my weight, uh, my pH, um, and a couple of other things. And so it's still an experiment as to how I want to lay this out. I did find um, a layout that um, a young lady who is a amazing YouTuber, um, her, the name of her channel is Penguins Creative. And if I um, remember her name, I'll make sure I put it in the description box so that you guys can 
um, find her. Um, but she had an amazing layout for how she is using her Hobonichi Weeks for wellness and self-care. So this Hobonichi Weeks is known as Green Apple. And I got it primarily because this 2020 is in purple. Like I just, I just had to have that. Um, if you guys didn't notice from my first video, I have purple hair. And so I just have this addiction to purple. Yeah. So I have a lot of purple things, but I had to have it. I thought it was cute and this will be my wellness and self care journal. So moving on, this is the A6 Hobonichi and this is specifically the English version. Um, also known as the Hobonichi original. Um, and so it has monthly layouts at the beginning. And then after that, it has daily pages. And I have been using this Hobonichi for years. It's the first Hobonichi that I ever purchased. And I used to watercolor in it. I used to journal in it. Um, I did try planning in it. Um, and as much as I love the portability of it, um, it was still a little bit too small for me to actually um, kind of write in. Like, it's just something about when your hand starts getting to the edge of the page and it's like this big, huge drop off from the edge of the page to the to the table. And that began to bother me just a little bit, which is why I love the cousin so much. Um, but I plan on using this journal as my challenges journal. So I have always said that I am going to do challenges every month, like the rock your handwriting challenge, the doodle challenge, all of those challenges, and I've never done it. So I decided to dedicate this Hobonichi to that purpose specifically. Um, so I've already kind of done um, just a few days of the rock your handwriting challenge in here. And I do plan to decorate some of these pages on some of the days, depending on what the prompts are. Um, but this will be the planner that I use specifically for all of my challenges. Now that could possibly change. Stay tuned. Um, because as other planner and journal addicts know, <laughs> um, your system never truly stays the same. It always changes at some point in time based on your needs or based on what's going on in your life. So, um, that is what I will be using for my challenge journal. And this is the Shakespeare's cover. I'm not certain if that's the actual name of it. So I'll try to look that up and put a link to the Hobonichi website for you guys to explore yourself too. But I do also have it in a clear cover on cover. Um, also from the Hobonichi website. Um, it's got a little pocket here on the back for you to stick stuff in, which is really convenient um, if you have stickers or anything else that you kind of want to keep with your planner. Um, and I also, of course, have the Hobonichi pen. This is this comes as a freebie when you order from the Hobonichi website along with a couple of other things. Um, but this is the one for 2019. So I keep this pen with this planner at all times so that I can just open it up and start writing and get on my challenges. So that is my challenge journal. The next one that I have is another A6 size Hobonichi, um, but this one is the day free in the A6 size. And I have it in this beautiful Mina Perhonen, I hope I am pronouncing that correctly, um, cover that I got from the Hobonichi website. And it's called Woodbird, and this is the one that's in gray. They do have one for the Hobonichi cousin, but that one is actually a navy, um, and the birds are slightly different color, but this was just so pretty. And it feels so good to my hands. Like, I'm a texture person. So I love this. Now, to be honest with you, I have no clue what I'm going to do with this. Um, I, I suspect that it's probably going to turn into a just free form journal. Um, because as I mentioned in my previous A6 Hobonichis, I used to watercolor a lot. Um, so I will probably use this just as free form journaling with watercolor and things like that. And then it has that cute little flip guide down in the bottom corner again. Yeah, so um, that is the current idea or thought for this planner. Um, but again, that may be subject to change. I do have like one of the little Kita, um, if I can get it out of here, one of the Kita washi strips or washi tape strips, um, packages that I keep in this because I do like to pull those out and stick them in, stick them in my journal layouts and things like that. Just kind of adds a little pop of color, um, or fun. Um, and I have a couple of other of those that I keep um, across my other journals too, but this one lives in here because I have a feeling that I'll just kind of be using it a lot in this particular planner. So that is 
my Hobonichi A6 Day Free. So those are the, all of the Hobonichis I plan on using. Um, now let's talk about a couple of other brands or one other brand in particular. Um, these are journals made by Ferris Wheel Press. This one here is known as the Nothing Left and this one here is known as the Always Right. See, left, right. Okay, I know that was corny. But anyhow, um, these are beautifully designed journals. And what I love most about them is like whatever this material is, like it's some kind of vegan leather. And uh, actually, I'm not even certain what type of material it is. If you do know, then please let me know down in the description um, or in the comments. Um, but it just feels so amazing. Like it's something about holding this journal that that makes you want to use it. Um, and both of these are made the same way um, with that same type of material. I did get this folio cover from Ferris Wheel Press for the Nothing Left notebook also, um, which is really kind of cool because it slides into this side pocket here on the left side. And then you can close it up and use the elastic to keep your journal closed, which I thought was really cool. Um, the Nothing Left journal has dot grid pages don't know how well you can see those because it is light and it is very dreary outside so um, i'm trying to give you guys as much of a view as i possibly can here and then in the top of each page you've got a date and then you've also got a little like the the days of the week so that you can circle what day of the week it is um, and so I thought this was really cool and it's made primarily, I guess, for like list makers. It would probably make an amazing bullet journal also, but I plan on using this journal for any type of education, personal development, um, or notes from books that I read. So that is my nothing left. Oh, also, I don't know if you noticed, like it has a little place here for you to put like your ink vial. If you are into fountain pens, which I am, I have a collection of them. Um, but you can actually slide a little little ink vial. Um, this one is specifically from Ferris Wheel Press also um, into this little slot. So you always have ink with you if you need to re-up your ink. And then there's a place for you to actually stick your fountain pen also right there in the center. Um, there's also a pocket here on the side of this folio for you to stick in any type of papers and things like that. So this was a beautiful beautiful journal that I just absolutely had to have. Now the Always Right um, is a unique actual shape. Um, it's kind of a square. And so this one is dot grid also. And what I love about these notebooks is that the dot grid is a fairly large dot grid, um, but it's so faint that it doesn't disturb you, you know, while you're writing. Um, and it also has like another one of those cute little flip animations down in the bottom corner here. It's like a little ink bottle that opens up, the pen comes out. And I just thought that was a really nice touch. Um, and then it has this beautiful yellow on the inside cover. Um, and I just thought it was gorgeous. Um, and so I plan on using this notebook as my short story notebook. Um, I have always wanted to write short stories. I am not an author by any sort of the imagination, um, but I do have a journalism degree and I figured maybe I should <laughs> at least try to use some of those skills that I learned during that time. So um, hopefully maybe you'll get to see like a story time with Ebby or something like that. Um, if you like, if that sounds interesting to you, then let me know. Um, just put it in the comments below, but that's something that I plan on doing in this notebook. So that's it for the Ferris Wheel Press Notebooks. Now, let me talk about this journal. This is my mixed media art journal. Um, and I have been using this one for, well, actually, let me say that I've had it for a while, but I've only used just a few of the pages. Um, but this is where I get to pull out all of my um, dilution paints, all of my di uh, distress inks, um, all of my ephemera, collage, all my um, stamps and um, multimediums and all of those things I get to actually play with in here. Um, as I mentioned in my introduction, um, I was into painting and all of those things when I was younger and it just kind of went by the wayside. And so I figured um, what better way to re-engage with that than to get a mixed media journal. 
And so that is what I will be using this for. This is actually made by Ranger. And it is the Dilutions line, um, which I believe is um, was in collaboration with Diane Reevely, who is an amazing, amazing artist. Um, so I will continue to do art journals in this notebook. And I was kind of inspired by another YouTuber. Her name is Vicky, um, and I cannot pronounce her last name, and I don't want to screw it up, so I won't even say it. But again, I'll put... Um, a link to her YouTube channel in the description box for you to find and follow her too. She does card making, but she also does amazing art journals. And she inspired me so much that I just had to give it a shot. So that is my art journal. Next up are these beauties. Um, I absolutely love Traveler's Notebooks from the feel of the, the leather. Um, I told you I'm a texture person. Um, and then aesthetically, they are just gorgeous. Um, so um, there's an interesting story about these, actually, and I'll start with this one. This was actually meant to be my bullet journal for 2020. Um, but I've noticed that I've just been using my A5 Hobonichi a lot more just because it's a little bit more freeform. Um, but as I started thinking about my setup for this year, um, I had run across this amazing insert made by Baum Kuhin. Um, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly either. You can let me know. Um, but they are a stationary company. They have a lot of amazing products on their site. Um, they do make inserts for the Traveler's Notebook. And this is specifically from the Traveler's Company. Um, and they made a planner insert for the Traveler's Notebook. Now, if you are into Traveler's Notebooks, you know that the Traveler's Company actually makes a like vertical weekly. They make a monthly insert. Um, they also have ones that are undated that you can actually purchase. And if you get a combination of those and you can pretty much cover, you know, your monthly layouts plus your weekly layouts, if you like weekly layouts, and then you can use their blank inserts or their grid inserts or dot grid inserts for, um, any of your daily pages, if you're into bullet journaling or just as a journaling insert. But when I saw this, I was really intrigued by it. It's called the GU planner and it is made using that same paper that's in the Hobonichi and it is called Tomoe River Paper and it is like the thinnest, most resilient paper um, that I've ever come across. And plus it's so thin and once you start using it, it's something about the way the paper starts to crinkle. Matter of fact, that's where my addiction to Hobonichis actually came from was just the feel of the paper after you've written and put all your thoughts and words on it. Um, but this particular planner has a place for you to kind of list your goals at the beginning. It's got this six month overview um, or six months on a page um, section where you can kind of put in birth dates, holidays, important dates, or you can use it as a bullet journal index if you wanted to. Um, and then it's got monthly layouts as well. And then there are actually weekly pages. And the weekly pages um, are a little bit unique compared to what you see in most um, horizontal weekly layouts. Um, it's got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday on one side, but then Saturday and Sunday is actually down here at the bottom. And at the top, you've got this blank section here, plus a little bit of a dot grid section here on the right side of the page um, where you can actually list goals for the week or what have you. You can journal, put quotes or anything like that here in this section. And I do have an addiction to quotes, which is why the name of my channel is Quotes and Scribes. I've been collecting them since I was a kid. Um, so I do like to put quotes in my layouts and journals and spreads and things like that. Um, but this was originally going to be my bullet journal. So I kind of treated it as such. Um, I've got some stickers here um, that I got from a cool little shop um, in Houston called Little Craft Place. Um, that I used to kind of highlight the dates here. Um, and the previous week was just something a little different. I had not figured out what I wanted to do here yet, even though this week has already passed, but still. Um, but this was going to be my bullet journal. Um, but like I said, I've been using the A5 Hobonichi so much that I've just kind of been using this more as a decorative planner um, or a memory keeping planner more than an actual functional everyday carry planner. Um, I also created a second insert or added a second insert, which is the grid 
notebook from the Traveler's Company, which was going to be my collections. Um, and I may repurpose this. This may still be collections. I'm not exactly certain what I'm going to do with it at this point. Um, but I still love this notebook and I love the aesthetic of it. And at the end of the day, um, if I'm in the mood, then I can just still grab it and carry it with me and, you know, jot down notes or treat it like my bullet journal um, as I move about also. The other traveler's notebook that I have is this black one. This is the first one that I ever purchased. I've got these little charms on it that I got from Michaels that I just added. Um, one says, not all those who wander are lost. And the other one says, be brave, because I have to remind myself to be brave. Um, but this one is actually going to be a travel journal. I still have a lot of ephemera from a trip that I took um, actually a couple of years ago, it's kind of sad, um, in this side that I need to add in or you know create my collage and spreads for. Um, but it is also another art journal. So this one is where I put a great deal of my, my journal spreads that have quotes in them in it. These are also on my Instagram page or some of them are, so I'll make sure I put a link to my Instagram also here. Um, in the um, description box below so that you can find me there. Um, but this is going to continue to be exactly that. Just a random journal, art journal, quote journal, or what have you, and travel journal. Now, I also have a passport size traveler's notebook. I've got a couple of other charms on this one as well that I also got from Michaels. This one says, all good things are wild and free. And this one says, love, courage, and adventure. Um, let's see, now you can see it. Um, but this is actually what I was going to call, or what I called my bullet journal or Bujo Express. Um, so this one I was going to carry on the go. And I still do carry it as on the go. I used to use this as my wallet, um, but I found this other wallet from Coach that I just thought was perfect for what I needed. It's kind of like an accordion style. I'll show that to you guys at some point in time. But anyhow, um, this was going to be my Bullet Journal Express. And so in here, I just capture like the main things that I needed to know for the day if I'm stepping out and I have a smaller purse or something like that with me. Um, also, it can be my on the go, you know, capture notes while I'm out and about. If there's something I need to capture as the day is going on and I just don't have the ability to pull out my big A5 Hobonichi. Um, so um, that is my Bullet Journal Express. And I've got some sticky notes back here at the back that I got from the Traveler's Company. Also got some dollars that I keep tucked away. Um, I don't know about you, but I just love finding money by accident. So sometimes I hide money from myself. And <laughs> when I forget that it's there and then I find it, it's like... Like the skies opened up like sunshine but anyhow um i also keep a food and cigar journal as well so um every time that i have a nice cigar because i do love fine cigars it's not something i do on a very regular basis um but when i do have a nice cigar i like to capture you know what i thought about it and particularly if i visit a restaurant then i like to jot down um the details of that restaurant maybe even capture like a little picture or how I felt about the place or how good the food was um, my friend and I we actually have a food Instagram so if you're interested in um, finding some really cool spots to eat um, in Dallas or actually a couple other places too, check us out um, I'll put a link to our Instagram it's food sense and nonsense that'll be down in the description box below but hey make sure you follow us there we eat and we love eating but it's really a chronicle of our adventures because we have a good time. Um, so this is my food and cigar journal also. So this stays in my purse at all times. And I've got a little Traveler's Company ballpoint pen that I keep with this also. So pretty cool for like writing things on the go. And it's so small to you. Like you could even attach it to like your, your um, to a lanyard or attach it to your necklace or something like that. Um, I can't remember the last time that I actually carried a pen around my neck, but hey, um, it's something that can be done and I'm not exactly <laughs> opposed to doing. So those are my traveler's notebooks. And as a matter of fact, let me show you this other really cool pen. I forgot to mention it, but this is one of my favorite fountain pens that I keep with my camel colored traveler's notebook. It is the regular size, by the way. 
Um, this is the hope. I'm, I'm sorry, the Traveler's Notebook fountain pen. So you can open it up and it's brass and it's just gorgeous. It's already getting a little bit of that patina on it, but I just had to show you that because I am a fountain pen fanatic also. I order a lot of them from Goulet Pens and I'll put a link to their website down in the description box also. And later in or in future videos, then I'll show you guys some of those other fountain pens that I use. And you'll probably see me writing with a lot of them also. So last but not least, I wanna talk about these babies. Um, these are happy planners. Now, when I first got into planning and journaling, somehow, some way, I just ended up gravitating toward Japanese planners and journals um, and just never quite considered the happy planner. But I have seen some amazing YouTubers um, that use these in the most amazing way. And that's because they are really customizable. Like you can add in pages, you can pull pages out, um, which I thought was really unique. They have several different inserts that you can stick in for whatever your needs are. Things like food logs, weekly logs, budget logs, all kinds of things, blank pages for whatever you need. And so the customizability of this system is what drew me to it. Not to mention that this was the first one that I saw and it is purple with these beautiful metal discs. So I had to buy it regardless to what purpose I was going to use it for. And I'm still trying to figure that out. But these are the experiments. So let's start with the favorite one. This is the Stargazer and it is the mini size Happy Planner. Um, and this particular one is actually what's known as the monthly layout. So at the beginning of each month, you got your calendar or your month on one or on two pages. Um, just before that, you actually have a place to start off the month with your gratitude. There's a little place for you to write down birthdays and important dates. And then you can put in a power word, which is cool. And then once you get past the monthly pages, then you've got a section for you to put in like um, anything that you want and maybe your goals for the month. And it's even got like three little habit trackers here on the left hand side here. Place for you to jot down some notes, a blank page for you to do some other things with. And then down here in the bottom right corner, it says intentions. And what I found unique about this monthly layout is that it actually has six checklist style um, lines for each day of the month. So for January, there are 31 of these. And then there's a section that says, don't forget. Um, and I really thought this was unique because as someone who has just still kind of stuck with the, the habit of bullet, bullet journaling, even though I don't um, use the traditional bullet journal notebooks, um, this still gave me a way to do that. So just to kind of give you an idea, um, for January, I've just kind of been writing in just my, you know, task lists and any thoughts and things like that that I have across the course of the day. Um, and I've just kind of been playing around with it to see how I feel about it and what I like um, and what I don't like. Um, I have run into a couple of things, but I really like the size of this and I love how you can add in additional like pages and notes to customize this entire system to get everything in one if you wanted to. So I am using this as an experimental bullet journal. And again, this is the Happy Planner Mini and specifically the style or design is called Stargazer. The next mini Happy Planner that I purchased is actually just a recipe book. So I have been cooking a lot more lately um, and I wanted to make sure that I have a place to capture all of my recipes. Um, I tend to find a lot of recipes online and once I find them, I might modify them according to my diet um, or the way that I attempt to eat during the week, <laughs> um, you know, from a healthy perspective. And when I do that, I want to make sure I captured what I substituted and what I actually did to that recipe to make it my own. And I thought this would be a really cool place to do that. And I also plan on getting the meal planning sheets. So I will keep my meal plan for the week as well as any recipes in this particular happy planner. So at the top has got a place for you to put the name of the recipe, any directions, how many people that it serves, 
And also any notes about the recipe specifically, prep time, cook time, and then of course the ingredient list. And it even has like these little tabs. Don't know if you can see those, but you got a place for favorites, main dishes, small dishes, soups, salads, healthy breakfast. Um, there's a tab for desserts and one for miscellaneous, miscellaneous recipes. And the tabs in all of the Happy Planners are just like really, really pretty. So that's the beginning, but this is the one for the favorites. It's the one for main dishes, small dishes. Oh, and this is really cute. It says, there is never enough time. And that's true. There's never enough time. Um, and then soups and salad says, happiness is homemade. This one says, the secret ingredient is always love. And then all of these oranges, grapefruits, and limes. I think I'm getting hungry. And then for, for dessert, it says a party without cake is just a meeting. I agree. I definitely agree with that. And then where there is a whisk, there is a way. And that is awesome. So that is my recipe slash meal planning happy planner. The next one is this classic size Happy Planner. And if you are familiar with Happy Planner, you know that this is, I think, their original size. I think this is the one that they originally created. Um, and this particular Happy Planner, or at least the design of it, um, is known as the Kindness Always. And this one is actually the lined vertical layout. So after your monthly goal page and notes and important dates and birthdays. Um, then you got your month on two pages and then you've got a weekly vertical layout with lines, which I thought was really cool. Again, as someone who, um, likes, you know, the bullet journal, you know, style of things, then this just gives me a way to list any tasks, thoughts, ideas that come to mind. And since there's quite a few lines here, then I've got quite a, quite a lot of space that I can use um, for a particular day. And even this shaded section here at the top that I can put in goals for the day or important dates, um, appointments that I may have, um, calls, meetings, etc. And then a section over here on the side for notes. This planner I plan on using as my business planner. Now I have not set it up yet because most of the things that I have been working on are all in my A5 um, or my Hobonichi cousin. Um, but again, because of how customizable this system is, the Happy Planner system is, they have project planning pages. They have, a, again, like I said, blank note pages. Um, so I can actually take that and keep track of all of my expenses, um, all of my YouTube notes, all of my journaling and blogging things um, can live in this planner. And so if I need to go to a meeting for whatever reason, then I can just take it on the go. If I need to discuss business with someone, then I've got everything that I need um, in this planner and this planner alone without me having to flip through all of my personal um, information in my bullet journal um, to find what I need. So I'm going to give this classic size happy planner a go for 2020 also. Can't wait to set this up. Um, there will be a, a video where I kind of show what I start doing with that. The last happy planner that I purchased is this adorable little micro happy notes. And this one is called do more. And it says on the front, do more of what makes you happy. And I am addicted to all things tiny. Like I know I carry around an A5 um, size Hobonichi, but something about tiny things just does it for me. I don't know what it is. And I saw this and I was like, this is like the most adorable thing on the face of the planet. Like this particular one came with little mini dot grid pages. I mean, they're terribly small, like the grid size is really small, but still, um, I'm pretty sure I can write, you know, somehow in it. Um, but I really don't know exactly what I want to do with it. I've seen some amazing setups of how people are using these micro notes. And I'm going to watch a few more of those to see if I get some ideas. And if you have some ideas, then please let me know. But I just have to have this because it was so adorable. There's even one more that I plan on getting. So stay tuned. You'll probably see another one of these pop up at some point in time in a later video. 
So those are all of the experimental planners. So that pretty much sums it up. That is everything that I plan on using for 2020, at least as it stands right, right now. And of course, this is subject to change. And you'll probably see a couple of other additions as the months go on just because I am addicted to planners and journals. But anyhow, if you liked what you saw, if you're curious about um, seeing me use these across the year, then please, please, please come along on this journey with me. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe, um, and also hit that little notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I post another video. Um, and thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I hope to be able to share more with you later. Thank you guys. Have an amazing day.